Hi, this is Professor Stugard, and in this video, we're going to discuss the concept of sampling. So in this video, we're going to talk about first how we can create a sampling distribution, and then hopefully we'll also understand why and how that is going to be useful for us, depending on our goal or our task that we need to complete in data science. So first of all, what is a sampling distribution? Well, it's first of all a distribution, but it's a distribution created from taking many samples from a, our population and then analyzing what that distribution looks like, where each one of those samples is just one unique data point given by some summary of the data. Um, and we'll give an example to hopefully make sure that that's clear. But we can also create sampling distributions by estimating parameters and then using technologies to do simulations. So, for example, Monte Carlo simulations, which are a very popular and useful technique when it comes to data science, uh, particularly forecasting future events where we have some unknown parameters. Um, the, these Monte Carlo simulations can create our distributions, which gives us a really great range of outcomes that lets us predict what will be what will happen when otherwise that would be an unobtainable result given our data. But we'll save that for another time. In this case, we just want to talk about sampling and how I can use sampling with large data sets. So again, the main idea here is let's say I have some very large data set and that's great because I can get a lot of insights about that data, but I want to be able to also predict what's going to happen at a smaller scale. So again, I think an example might help here. Let's say we have an insurance company, they have just tons of data, so they have data on tens of thousands of their clients, but they want to predict the behavior in just a smaller group of maybe just 50 clients. So again, they have data on their tens of thousands of clients, but they want to know what to expect with the next 50 clients that they sign up. What's that going to look like? And so we know that there's going to be variation in these smaller groups. That's the whole idea of taking a sample, right? The idea in statistics of taking a sample and performing statistical inference is this concept that each sample that I take is going to be a little bit different. So there's going to be variation in each of our samples, and we want to try to measure that. And so again, a lot of times when we talk about inferential statistics, this is where we include things like margin of error or uh, a confidence interval or a level of confidence because we know that there's going to be that, that variation. And by doing sampling on a large data set, we can actually try to model or predict what these smaller samples are going to look like. Uh, and again, technology makes this really, really easy. So we're gonna look at a much smaller scale problem so that again, hopefully we, we can understand the process in this very, very small scale so that when we actually do scale it up to tens of thousands of data points, um, we still have this, this concept here. So Let's assume that this is our population, which is a size of 10, so big N is 10, and we're investigating this variable for marital status or M status. So yeah, we can see that we have this variable where you're either married, divorced, or single. And again, we're gonna assume that this is our entire population. This is all of our data. Uh, but the question becomes, well, I know that based on this data, half the people in my data set are married, right? Five out of the 10, really easy to find that proportion what would happen if I had a group of just four of them at a time? So instead of my whole population of 10, what happens if there's only four at a time? So maybe the next four people that get added to this data set, can I predict what that's going to look like? Or just if I had just a random grouping of these four, what is that going to look like too? So we're gonna do sample one, which means I'm gonna randomly pick n equals four and little n for our sample size. So I'm going to randomly pick four observations and then just record that sample proportion who are married. So let's say we randomly go through and we sample and I get married, single, divorced, and single. So only one out of those four were married. So my sample proportion or my p hat is going to be 0.25 for sample one. Now we need to record that data. And so again, our first sample is being recorded as just a single data point now, that's 0.25, because again, that's the variable we're looking at is marital status, though of course there might be tons of other variables as well. But now I have to select a second random sample. And again, we need to keep our sample size the same size, so I still need n being equal to four, and I'm gonna choose four more randomly from this list. There we go. In this case, I have married, married, single, single, so now I have two out of four, or a proportion of 0.5. I need to record that in my table as well. 
And so that gives me my sample proportion for sample number two. And now I need a third random sample with n equals four. So again, we're gonna pick four more random choices. So divorced, married, married, single. So again, I get two out of four, even though it's a different sample altogether. We record that as 0.5 and then, okay, we're going to continue this process two more times. So let's say we got 0.75. So the next sample had three out of four that were married. And then my last sample, there was two out of five. So again, we get that 0.5. Well, now I want to analyze each of these samples as their own distribution. So here's my samples. And first, again, we can graph it. And again, this is a very small data set, which is five points. So we can see that 0.25 shows up once, 0.5 shows up three times, 0.75 shows up once. So I have a symmetric distribution with a mean of 0.5, which is what I should expect. With my samples, I would expect my sample to be, to have that same mean, or at least close to it, depending on, you know, obviously some random variations and just the chaotic nature of our universe. We would expect to be very, very close if we're not exactly on it. And then the important part is that I can see now that my values of a sample with a size four now range between 0.25 and 0.75. So that's the variation that I can expect now. Now, again, this is a very, very small example that is actually not really statistically valid because everything is way too small. Like I said, we're gonna scale this up to thousands of observations and then sample sizes that are maybe, well, how do I pick my sample size? Well, based on our sampling, the whole goal is that now I have expectations about how any new sample should behave, which means I can predict future behavior, which is really the main goal of trying to do this data science. Can I predict what's going to happen, right? There's two parts, obviously the analytics part where we can analyze data. And then the other part is once I analyze that data, can I predict what's going to happen in the future? Now we're taking samples of samples. And like I said, this example is way too small. So it is important to sketch out your process though, even in this small example. So I started with a population size of 10. My sample size for each of my samples has a size of four. And then my sampling distribution size was five. So I had five different samples, each of size four taken from a population of size 10. So we have three different sizes involved in this sampling. And it's just really, really important that we really keep track of this. We sketch out what we're trying to do so that we don't, um, well, get confused and start using the wrong variables and the wrong place. Now, like I said, this example, way too small, doesn't really, not useful besides just kind of displaying how we do sampling. When we do our samples and we set up our sampling sizes, there are measures that we can use to make sure that our samples are going to be appropriate and we will be able to gain the insights we want to gain. First of all, for proportions or our parameter P and we have a population size of capital N, the first thing is I wanna choose my sample size, my individual samples, such that N times P is greater than 10 and also N times P minus one is greater than 10. So, okay, what does that actually mean? Well, N times P is our expected value. So I wanna make sure that N times P, P being my probability for success, is at least 10. So that means I want 10 successes and if I'm doing n times p minus one, p minus one is my prob probability of failure. So I want at least 10 failures. So no matter what in my sample size, if I'm looking at proportions, I want at least 10 successes and 10 failures. And again, depending on what we think our uh, parameter p or that proportion is going to be, again, we might have to scale our, our sample up or down accordingly. And then the last thing though, is we also wanna make sure that when we take our individual samples, if I'm gonna be sampling again and again and again, typically we want to make sure that our samples are going to be less than 5% of my total population size. Uh, this will help ensure some random ability, some randomness and, and make sure that we're not uh, necessarily repeating the same data points too often either. Uh, if we are looking at sample means, so again, I wanna look at averages out of my samples, which would be uh, the parameter mu, Again, I wanna choose N so that it's big enough. In this case, I just got to make sure that my sample size is at least 30, then the central limit theorem kicks in uh, and I will get a nice distribution. And then similarly, I wanna make sure that my sample size is also less than 5% of my population. Um, and again, that just helps my distributions look nice and, and helps my, my analysis. So can we answer the following questions about sampling? First of all, why would I want to even create a sampling distribution? Hopefully we can understand kind of the purpose there. 
And then number two, this is the important one. When we're doing sampling, can we explain the differences between our population size, our sample size, and then our sampling distribution size? All right. So that's all for sampling right now. We're going to obviously look at this even more in depth with technology and how it can be applied. But for now, hopefully we get to understand the main concept of sampling. And as always, take care of yourselves.